everyone, I'm Gabriella Buckingham. I'm an artist and artist activator because I love to inspire other artists to jump in and really discover their art. I've been painting for just over 32 years now as a professional artist, most of that time as an illustrator and designer, and in the last four years as a fine artist. I devised Experimental Still Life, the course, as a way to take myself and other budding artists on a journey of discovery, to find out what really lights us up about still life painting and establishing our process as we discover and explore acrylic painting itself. Experimental still life will inspire you and it will ground you in your own abilities. And the only way to do that is to be brave in paint and risk making horrible paintings. Because while doing that, you will discover wonderful things like new colour palettes and ways of approaching still life or painting generally that take you in a new direction. If you like my own work and you want to see how I paint, then you will. I paint on camera a lot throughout this course. You get to see me do nearly all of the exercises and a few entire paintings. And I make mistakes. I am brave in paint. Otherwise, I'm not going to discover what I don't like and what I do like. And that is what I want for you. Okay, so time to show you quickly inside the actual course platform itself at Brave in Paint. So once you're logged in to Brave in Paint, this is what you'll see. You'll see your courses listed here, and that comes under products. And then the community is just here. So if I click this, the course will open and you can click on any of the lessons. So the heading for each module is marked in bold and then all the lessons are listed on the left underneath and you simply scroll down like this to reach all the other content. In each module there is an audio to listen to as well as a written summary of what's in the module and what you're aiming at as well. Over here you can see the chat. I am the only one that reads these and that sees these and that replies to you. So it's an entirely private way for you to get my help and ask me any question you like on your painting or art business. So essentially you have me as a mentor whenever you are doing this course over the next eight months to two years or however long you want to take doing it. Let's have a quick look at the community. This is what you'll see when you go into the group. This is the free group open to anybody. But when you're actually subscribed to a course itself, all you have to do is send me a message on the chat box here and say that you've joined the free group and could I allocate you to the experimental still life topic? And that will then appear here and then you can start using it. Okay. Let's have a look at module one. This module contains all the housekeeping, more detail on different acrylic paints, reading resources, artist mindset and meditation, how to inspire yourself, setting up a still life. That's the free lesson. Several drawing exercises, and an introduction to blind drawing. Module two is about colour and composition. We begin with films about composition and I show you examples and then we get stuck into the exercises. Composing with values and seeing the values in colour, exercises on colour mixing, complementary colours and spatial awareness with colour, painting with the principles and elements in mind and combining your knowledge at the end in an exercise where you do a painting that's almost like your own exploration and summary of what you've learned. And of course you can do more than one. Module three is let's explore. We really experiment looking at backgrounds, line and shape, using the jelly plate, collage with the papers that we make, exploring painting on different types of surface, paper and cardboard, you can see what exciting work it's possible to do on cardboard. This is Rosa Roberts who gave me permission to use this photo. We'll also try painting without brushes, giant sketch painting, 
painting over a variety of different backgrounds and finally assessing what you've enjoyed and what you'd like to explore further. At the end of each module, I ask you to reflect on what you've learned. So you will need a journal for all this or, or a sketchbook. It doesn't really matter what. So module four is everyone can paint a lemon. This is all about painting from observation. It's not about painting realistically, though of course you can if that's the style that you have. I kind of lean that way and I'm trying to fight it and explore other ways of working. This is the key thing for me. You will have a different core response to painting with observation. And that's what we're trying to discover. We begin by looking at inspiring paintings made from observation. This one is by Melanie Graham, who took the course the first time round. And then you paint a lemon or other fruit of your choice. Here are two pieces by two students from last year, Anne Atkinson and Sigrun Hodner. There's an exercise called Paint the Light, still life of self-portrait, the hidden beauty of the mundane, the feeling of flowers, and we look at how artists have used still life with views. There are exercises on disrupted realism and stylization too. That colourful painting was by artist Sandy Hester. I hope that all these exercises are really going to uncover what exactly appeals to you about still life and particularly observational still life. And then you can take that into the next module when you're going to be working from imagination. And this is module five, painting from the inside out. The first exercise is really challenging. I ask you to paint what emerges and you might be frustrated by what comes out. I know I was, and that shows you where the gaps are in your own ability after that, there's a lesson called Vision of Vessels, and you see lots of examples to inspire you. And I paint a few on camera too. And then you go on to a floral adventure and you see me paint this painting over a prepared background. Then you see me create a mini collection of still life paintings. From my imagination, that would be a great one to emulate to get the feeling for working on a collection and perhaps selling for the first time. In the last exercise, you incorporate everything you've learned from module four and five and create a painting that sort of summarises where you want to go or what you found most interesting. So let's go on to module six. Module six is let's abstract. Starting with a film on what abstract art is, you assess what abstraction means for your own work throughout this module. We paint with a jelly plate in an abstract way or incorporate this into simplifying our work or adding texture. We look at painting the spaces between objects as a way into abstraction. And in exercise five, I invite you to look at the painting style of a couple of different artists, and of course you could choose your own, and try to work in that style. And there's an exercise in which you can use collage in a sophisticated and planned way to see if you enjoy doing that. In the next exercise, you switch things up to go loose and you see me paint the beginnings of this painting, which, in, which the Royal Academy made into a print in summer 2023. The next exercise is called Line More Than Anything, which as you'll see can be interpreted widely. Here is a gorgeous painting that I love called Favourite Things by Angela Slack, who took my course a couple of years ago. Exercise eight is organic abstraction for those that know they want to explore abstracting florals or plants. Exercise nine was one of my favourites. The starting point being found colour. And then we come to lesson 10. This is more of an inspirational lesson rather than an exercise as such. Sally Ann is a great abstract artist and she shows us two process videos and there are some beautiful examples of her work to see. Sally Ann works very differently from me and it's wonderful to see her take on being inspired by still life in an abstract way. Next we have module seven let's go big and i really encourage students to examine thoroughly what they've done so far and evaluate exactly how working larger is going to help what they're trying to achieve i talk about priming planning your color palette and paint mixing and then we warm up to scaling with exercises on paper and covering large surfaces in various ways working intuitively on old canvases painting on raw canvas, blind painting, and exercise eight is making the biggest painting you can in a week or the equivalent time. 
you see me paint a few large paintings and I'm going to explain my thinking and things to consider as I go through the quite tricky process, the messy middle and finally reach a conclusion. The next module is a bonus module, module eight. And this is more about what you do with your paintings once they're finished. So it's about photography, varnishing, framing, potentially selling your work and different ways you could do that and studio practice in general. So that's it in a big nutshell. This course is going to be really exciting and involving for you if you're a budding artist who loves to paint with acrylic paint and you want to explore still life painting. So please ask me any questions you like and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and perhaps I can support some of you through going through this process. I know that the artists that have really delved into this course have so appreciated it. So I hope you may become one of them.